come here for a minute. It was a quiet afternoon at the house I shared with my in-laws. Just as I was heading to my room, my father-in-law, with a furrowed brow, suddenly grabbed my arm in the hallway. What? Please, let me go. Shocked by the suddenness, I asked him to release me, but he didn't respond. He's usually not very talkative. Without a glance at my distraught face, he pulled me toward the bathroom, trying to drag me inside. Despite my desperate resistance, his strength was overwhelming, and escape was impossible. No, please, someone help me! My silent screams went unheard as the bathroom door locked with a click. There he stood, approaching me. Could it be that I was trapped? The blood drained from my body at the thought of this unbelievable situation. Why are you doing this? Please, let me out! Trapped in this small space, there was no way to dodge any physical harm. I had to escape somehow. While I struggled to shake off my father-in-law's grip, I reached for the bathroom lock, but he forcefully stopped me. I was no match for his strength. As I continued to resist, he raised his free hand as a gesture of giving up. I thought it was all over. As despair loomed before me, my father-in-law calmly gestured for silence. I apologize for the rough handling. But please, calm down. I needed to tell you something important before things got out of hand. With a serious expression, far from any violent intent, he tried to calm me. Something important? My struggling hand stopped. Seeing me quiet down, he slowly released his grip. Looking at my slightly reddened arm, he apologized again with a pained expression. It seemed there was a reason for his actions. What is going on? It's... Just as he was about to explain, voices could be heard beyond the bathroom door. He gestured for me to listen, and I fell silent. Hearing those voices, I trembled. Never did I imagine I would learn something so horrifying. I am Emma, a 34-year-old homemaker. I met my husband Ethan while traveling, our shared love for flowers bringing us together during a visit to a flower field. We hit it off immediately thanks to his cheerful and talkative nature, and it didn't take long for us to start dating. Despite our long-distance relationship, our frequent visits kept our bond strong, and we eventually got married. After getting married, I quit my job and moved into my in-law's house. I now live with my husband Ethan, father-in-law James, and mother-in-law Olivia. My father-in-law runs a factory, and as my husband is set to take over his business, living together was a prerequisite for our marriage. I had been aware of the cohabitation plan since we were dating, and having met my in-laws and gotten a good impression, I was completely comfortable with the arrangement. Thus began our life living together. At first, I was nervous and awkward, but my father-in-law, though not much of a talker, treated me with a gentle demeanor, and my mother-in-law, though she dotes on my husband a bit too much, is a reliable person who genuinely cares for me. Supporting my husband as he strives to take over the business while doing household chores, and spending days with my kind in-laws isn't too bad at all. However, there was just one problem. It was the presence of my sister-in-law, Abigail. Emma, is the tea ready yet? Honestly, get it together. What will the neighbors think if they hear the younger brother's wife is so clueless and slow? I'd be embarrassed to come back home. Currently, my sister-in-law lives with her boyfriend and is usually not at my in-law's house, but she often returns and belittles me every time we meet. She mocks my appearance, criticizes my housekeeping, and sometimes, under the guise of discipline, hits me hard. I'm sorry, Emma. She's a bit harsh, but she's not a bad person. Whenever Abigail goes too far, my mother-in-law always smiles with a troubled look. She loves not only my husband but also my sister-in-law very much, but to me, she only seems like a person with a bad character. 
When I first met my sister-in-law, she didn't even greet me. Her first words to me were, I can't see someone like you making it as a wife. Certainly, that was not a good impression. I don't get along with my sister-in-law, but since she has moved out, I thought living together wouldn't be a problem. Of course, we would meet occasionally, but I never expected her to return home so frequently. When she comes to my in-law's house, she just lazes around, constantly complaining and finding fault with the food I prepare. If she has complaints, she shouldn't eat, but she always eats more than twice what my husband does, so I have to prepare a lot, which is quite a hassle. However, I can't say that in front of my mother-in-law, who adores her. When I keep silent, it's then my husband, Ethan, who taps my shoulder and speaks up. My sister has always been like that. Don't worry. You just haven't had many conversations with her yet, but you'll get used to it soon. Then you'll start to see her good sides too. I almost blurt out that if she has always been like this, there's little chance she'll change, but I swallow my words. My husband adores his sister, and no matter how terribly she treats me, he does not interfere with her actions. My father-in-law doesn't seem to care much about my sister-in-law's behavior and never says anything. But this is only while my sister-in-law is at my in-law's house. If she weren't here, it would be perfectly peaceful, so I just need to endure it while she's around. And so, I was getting through the days. What's with this flower? As usual, when my sister-in-law came back to my in-law's house, she pointed at a flower displayed on the living room table. It was a single gerbera in a slender vase. I had arranged it the day before. Since we got married, we haven't traveled much because it's expensive, so I thought I'd at least indulge in my other hobby, flowers, which I buy from the florist. I arranged it. I've always loved flowers. I figured putting up just one occasionally would be nice. Oh. Another one of Emma's antics? Unbelievable. She made a displeased face and let out an exaggerated sigh. Unbelievable. What do you mean? You suddenly put up the flower, hoping to be praised by Ethan or Mom, right? It must be for that reason, wasting money like that. Emma, you really have a bad personality. While clicking her tongue, she glared at me. It's absolutely not true that I put up the flower to be praised. The money came out of my own allowance. Just as I was about to retort, my sister-in-law suddenly moved closer to the vase and reached out her hand. Could you please not put things in the house on your own? It's an eyesore. Remember, this is also my home. Then, my sister-in-law roughly grabbed the flower and, while tearing off the petals, threw them into the trash can. What are you doing? If you don't like the flowers, you could just move them from the living room to my room. Just having your flower in the house makes me uncomfortable. Oh, you really are a terrible woman. I wish I could throw you out along with this flower. After shrugging dramatically and glaring at me, she gestured dismissively with her hand and left the living room. What was left was just an empty vase. I stared dumbfounded at the flower in the trash can. The petals were cruelly scattered on the floor. It was clear harassment, there was no need to go this far. Overwhelmed by the sheer audacity, I closed my eyes and clenched my fists tightly. This time, my sister-in-law's behavior was too much to overlook. I decided to talk about my sister-in-law with my husband and in-laws when she wasn't around. I planned to gather the three of them in the living room and earnestly explain everything that had happened. I couldn't bear my sister-in-law's constant insults anymore. The way she tore up and threw out the flower I bought right in front of me deeply hurt me. Even if they usually take a vague stance because they are fond of her, I believed that if I spoke up, this time they would understand that her behavior was excessive. However, the situation turned out far different from what I expected. 
Emma, aren't you the one causing her to act this way? What? I was so shocked by her response that I froze. My mind went blank. Am I the problem? Why? She continued to glare at me. I'm saying your attitude and actions are the problem. Abigail is just trying to help you by scolding you, and yet you say you can't stand it? That's just being spoiled. She tapped the table forcefully with her fingertips in an intimidating manner. I don't remember doing anything wrong, and I can only think that my sister-in-law is harassing me. Those were certainly not the words of someone trying to help me. My mother-in-law didn't show any sign of listening to me. But I couldn't just stay silent and back down, so as I was about to argue, a loud bang on the table next to me made me jump. It was my husband sitting beside me. When I turned to look at him, he was staring at me with an angry expression. It's your fault for upsetting Abigail. Why don't you do things that make her happy? You married into this family, so you should be more considerate. Emma, you're always getting scolded by her. Even you, Ethan. His words hurt me deeply. I didn't come here just to marry into this family. I wanted to marry and spend my life with my husband, not to appease his sister. If even my husband treats me this harshly, what am I supposed to think about my place here? Throughout this, my father-in-law, who had been silent, grimaced and crossed his arms, then muttered. Emma, I'm sorry, but can you bear with it a little longer? Was he suggesting I should silently endure my sister-in-law's unreasonable behavior? How much longer is a little? Will enduring solve anything? It seemed unlikely. It appeared he had no intention of intervening in this matter. No more words came out after that. In the end, no one listened to me, and the discussion was over for the day. It seemed I had to keep enduring my sister-in-law's irrational treatment. The thought alone was depressing. But the real hell began the next day. Emma, have you finished cleaning? What about the shopping? I'm sorry. I just finished cleaning. You're so slow. I didn't realize you were this sluggish. The day after I brought up my sister-in-law, my mother-in-law's attitude changed drastically. She left all the household chores to me, starting to berate me just like my sister-in-law did. I can see why Abigail was angry. You really are a disappointing daughter-in-law, Emma. Right? She's truly worthless, poor Ethan. Maybe you should wear a mask when shopping so the neighbors don't find out what a disgrace she is. How embarrassing. When my sister-in-law returned to my in-law's house, the bad-mouthing got even worse. She made sure I could hear her insulting me. With their laughter and insults behind me, I had no choice but to keep up with the endless chores. The worst part was that it wasn't just my mother-in-law whose attitude had changed. This side dish tastes odd, doesn't it? The flavor is too bland. Really? It's the same seasoning I used last time. Are you talking back to me? If I say it's bland, it's bland. Make it over, now. Even my husband's behavior had blatantly worsened, as he joined in with my sister-in-law and mother-in-law. He complained about trivial things and laughed with them. I had hoped that at least my husband would stand by me. It hurt to hear such words from him too. Enough. Be quiet during meals. The only time my father-in-law intervened was with comments like this, but he never really took a strong stand against the three of them. I had no allies in this household, I was utterly isolated. Tears came as I endured endless mistreatment like a housemaid. Why am I even here? What were all those days we spent getting along as a family of four about? I had cherished my in-laws like my own parents, but now, it seemed impossible to feel that way anymore. My husband had never been this cruel before. The recipes hadn't changed at all. 
He used to enjoy my cooking, but now it was he who had changed. I couldn't stay here any longer. Before I was completely crushed, I decided I needed to get away from the house. I secretly resolved to move out. Days after making this decision, it was another afternoon. Today was another day my sister-in-law would come to the house. Lately, on the days she was expected back, I would stay in my room on the second floor as much as possible to avoid her, only coming out when called or to do chores. Even passing her in the hall could lead to a barrage of complaints. Her arrival time was approaching. I had finished all my chores in advance, hoping not to be called upon, and was thinking about discussing the dissolution of cohabitation with my husband as I headed to the stairs. That was when I saw my father-in-law standing silently in the hallway with a stern expression. James? Is there something you need from me? Emma, come here for a minute. Suddenly, he grabbed my arm. What? James? What are you doing? Shocked by the sudden event, I asked him, but he did not respond. As I looked at his silent profile, he pulled me by the arm toward a bathroom near the living room. I tried to resist, but his strength was overwhelming, and I couldn't break free from his grasp. No! Someone help me! My silent cries went unheard as the lock clicked shut behind me. There he stood, blocking my way. Could I really be locked in? I felt all the blood drain from my body as the unbelievable situation set in. Why are you doing this? No! Please, let me out! Thinking about how my usually quiet and relatively gentle father-in-law could resort to such violent measures was terrifying. The strength he used to drag me here was undeniable. I was no match for him. As I desperately tried to unlock the door, he forcefully stopped me and raised his free hand. It's no use. As despair loomed before me, my father-in-law gestured for silence with a calm expression. I'm sorry for the rough treatment, but please calm down. I needed to tell you something important before things escalate. With an expression far from any violent intent, he spoke earnestly to me. Something important? My resistance stopped. Seeing me quiet down, he slowly released his grip. He looked at my slightly reddened arm and apologized again with a pained expression. There was no sign he would come at me violently again. It seemed there was a reason for his actions. What exactly is going on? Please explain. It's... Just as he was about to say something. I'm home. It was the voice of my sister-in-law returning to the house. Hearing this, my father-in-law lowered his voice and directed his gaze toward the bathroom door. His eyes seemed to be glaring at something beyond the door. It's quicker if you hear it for yourself rather than me explaining it. This made no sense to me. Confused, I tried to ask him for an explanation, but he signaled for me to be quiet again. What exactly was going on? I stayed silent as instructed, and soon, I could hear voices. This house is truly the most comforting place. Hey, where's Emma? Emma went upstairs as usual. How rude of her not to greet Abigail. Yeah, really. I'm shocked she can't even greet you properly. Maybe marrying Emma was a mistake. It was the voices of my mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and husband. They seemed to be talking in the living room. It sounded like they were speaking ill of me. But this was nothing new, it wasn't a particularly unusual scene. The usual insults were nothing different. What was my father-in-law trying to show me by doing this? Well, it's fine. Thanks to Emma being upstairs, we can talk about that plan more easily. That plan? I was puzzled by her words. If it was convenient for me to be upstairs, it must be something they didn't want me to know about. 
I looked up at my father-in-law in surprise, and he nodded slightly before glaring at the bathroom door again. Basically, as long as it looks like an accident, it's fine, right? Exactly. Then the insurance money will come in, and we can use it to pay off all of Abigail's debts. Emma being here has finally become useful. Lucky that Emma is here. With the leftover money after repaying the debts, I'll share it with Ethan and Mom. Look forward to it. That's great, Abigail. Even that useless daughter-in-law has her uses. Their conversation drained the blood from my face. My hands started to shake. They were planning to make my death look like an accident to erase her debts with the insurance money. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. Despite their usual bad mouthing, this was too much. Most of all, I never wanted to know that my husband was enthusiastic about such a plan. Seeing me tremble, my father-in-law started to speak in a low voice. Now you understand why I brought you here. I'm ashamed of my family. I'm truly sorry. With a pained expression, he sighed while keeping his voice low. He had brought me to the bathroom to inform me of this plan. But why would the three of them? There's been talk of this for a while now. I think it started around the time she threw away your flower. They approached me about getting the insurance money. Since then, I've been pretending to be on Ethan's side to gradually draw out information. I've been looking for the right moment to tell you, though it turned out to be quite forceful. On the day their behavior changed, they had discussed taking my life. Apparently, he only scolded their excessive behavior in front of them so he could gather information without them suspecting it. My father-in-law was really on my side. I was surprised to learn he had been looking out for me. I had always thought he was indifferent to me and my sister-in-law. The reason he took such drastic measures now was because he thought that if he suddenly revealed the plan, I wouldn't believe him since I saw him as siding with my husband. It would be difficult to go to the police without solid evidence, and they were strongly united against me. He chose this drastic method because he thought it was the only way to make me believe it was true. I'm sorry for scaring you. Please, run away from this house now. I have caused you trouble, not just this time but also in the past for not being able to help you. In the cramped bathroom, he apologized deeply. I quickly shook my head. It's not his fault. No, James, you did warn them. It's not your fault. Thank you for telling me about this. It's a relief to hear you say that. We're out of time. Listen, if you go upstairs to get your things, don't touch the handrails and make sure you go quietly, understand? Now, you must go quickly. Saying that, he took out some money from his wallet, apologized for it being a small amount, and handed it to me as funds to help with my escape. While slightly puzzled by his caution, I kept it in mind, nodded slightly, and left the bathroom. In the living room, I could still hear cheerful voices, but I might be called at any moment. Following his instructions, I didn't touch the handrail and crept silently up the stairs. I hurriedly packed a few days worth of clothes and essentials. That should do it, I can escape. I picked up the bag. That was when it happened. Emma? What are you doing? A stern voice came from behind. Tentatively turning around, I saw my husband glaring at me. Ethan. What's with that luggage? He pointed to the packed items. It was clearly not a light travel bag. If caught, he would realize I was planning to escape. This is, well, I was just gathering some things I don't need anymore. You're not thinking of running away, are you? Caught off guard, my husband's sharp gaze made it difficult to come up with a quick excuse. Realizing from my expression that he had hit the mark, he seemed convinced I was planning to flee. 
I shook my head from side to side in denial, but he glared at me even more fiercely. His face twisted in anger as if he were a demon, his fury manifesting visibly. Don't joke with me. Do you know how much I've put up with you, you ungrateful slowpoke? I won't allow you to run away. Mom, Dad, Abigail. Emma is trying to escape. He shouted so loudly it seemed to shake the house. Just as my father-in-law had tried to help me escape, my husband had discovered me. A cold sweat ran down my back. From below the stairs, there was a sudden flurry of noises. I could hear my father-in-law and mother-in-law exchanging words. Running away? Ethan, I'm coming up there, don't let Emma escape. She won't make it out of this house. Her shrill, annoying voice echoed up to the second floor. Then came the sound of someone rushing up the stairs. If Abigail also reached the second floor, I had no confidence that I could still escape. Maybe escaping was impossible from the start, and I should just give up. Just as I was about to lose heart, my husband turned around with a startled expression. He hurried out of the room and yelled toward the stairs. Abigail, don't touch the handrail! What? Right after she exclaimed in surprise, there was a disturbing crackling sound of wood. The sound of something large tumbling down the stairs followed, ending with tremors that shook the house. What just happened? After a moment of silence, I heard my husband rushing down the stairs. A scream of anguish followed shortly. No! Abigail, hold on, Abigail! Tentatively, I also stepped out and went down the stairs, where I found my sister-in-law lying on the first floor. The handrail near the top of the stairs had come loose and was clutched in her hand. My father-in-law's warning about the handrail made sense now, it was meant for this. If I had unknowingly grabbed the handrail while going upstairs, I might have been unable to react to it coming loose, ending up like my sister-in-law. The thought made me shudder deeply. Was this their plan to make it look like an accident? Realizing they were indeed planning to harm me was terrifying. I couldn't believe these were the people I had lived with. Fortunately, my sister-in-law only had scrapes and bruises, and she quickly got up. However, the pain from tumbling down the stairs seemed severe, and she glared at me with a vexed expression. It's your fault, Emma. I fell because of you. You pushed me. Her absurd accusation almost made my mouth drop open. It was absolutely impossible for me to have pushed her. Because I was in the room. Moreover, my husband was closer to the stairs and if anyone were to have pushed her, it would logically be him given his position. Besides, the handrail was already loose, making her excuse implausible. But upon hearing this, my mother-in-law smirked and turned toward me. That's right, it must be so. I saw it with my own eyes. Emma pushing Abigail down the stairs. Emma, prepare yourself because I will be demanding compensation. It's your fault Abigail fell. My sister-in-law's absurd claims were immediately supported by both my mother-in-law and husband. Despite the clear evidence to the contrary, they were blaming me. If the three of them corroborated their stories, it would be bad. As it stood, I couldn't prove my innocence. I was pondering how to break this deadlock when it happened. Enough. My father-in-law shouted to silence them. His typically few words and calm demeanor only amplified the impact of his commanding voice, making the three shrink back. Put an end to this disgrace. I've recorded everything you guys said today. There's also footage of Ethan tampering with the handrail. As my father-in-law glared sternly while holding up his smartphone, the three turned away awkwardly. Faced with their horrifying scheme, he realized he couldn't stop them just by talking and decided to gather evidence to prevent any action. 
He had intended to prevent any danger to me by collecting evidence beforehand, but upon learning of the tampered handrail, he prioritized my safety and let me hear their plan directly to help me escape. It turns out he had secretly installed surveillance cameras and had recorded not only their plotting but also the moment my sister-in-law grabbed the loose handrail and fell down the stairs. Viewing the footage that clearly served as evidence, they were visibly shaken. It was revealed that my husband had forgotten to inform my sister-in-law about the tampered handrail since she usually didn't go upstairs. With this video, their excuses would not be heard. However, despite such overwhelming evidence, they remained unconvinced. Dad, you were betraying us. Are you really siding with Emma, who is not even blood-related, over your own family? You're being deceived by that woman. You're just being used. Please open your eyes. The three were furious, unable to accept that my father-in-law was on my side. Then, placing a hand on his head, he sighed deeply. Are you still saying that, after all this? He looked at them with deep contempt in his eyes. The coldness of his gaze made me gulp in fear. Even though you are my blood family, I cannot overlook a crime. Emma has cared for us as much as her own, if not more, and yet you do not understand her love. I am utterly ashamed. With those words, my father-in-law's shoulders slumped in despair. Whether his words struck a chord or not, the three no longer raised their voices. Emma, I will make sure Ethan signs the divorce papers. I promise to ensure he pays compensation for all the trouble you have endured. Thank you, James. In the silence that followed, my father-in-law faced me. He apologized deeply and I nodded to him. I believed that he would keep his promise. As I turned to leave. Emma, I truly am sorry. I apologize for everything until now, so please forgive me. At least let the compensation be. Realizing he would have to pay compensation, my husband rapidly apologized. As he marveled on the floor, I looked down at him and spoke. Just apologizing for everything doesn't wash away what you've done. You were the one who demanded compensation from me just a moment ago, so don't expect me to be that generous. Do you even remember what you've done? This isn't something that can be settled with just money, you understand? I smiled slightly as my husband was speechless. There was no way I could forgive him with just an apology. He had attempted to take my life. I hope he understands the gravity of his actions. It's not just Ethan. I'll claim Olivia and Abigail as well. All three of you will pay money, so be prepared. Both my mother-in-law and sister-in-law paled visibly. Then, I left the house and successfully escaped their grasp. Afterward, my husband and I divorced without incident. Given that it ended in an attempt, I received compensation from each of the three instead of a settlement. Under my father-in-law's decision, my husband was removed from being the next factory manager and was told he wouldn't hold any significant positions until he had finished paying the compensation to me. Having bragged extensively about taking over the factory, he was suddenly withdrawn, causing rumors among the employees that he must have caused some serious issues. Now, he is being relentlessly worked under a younger new factory manager, having his pride shattered daily. It is a just retribution. My mother-in-law has not worked properly since she got married, she is struggling to learn a new job. My sister-in-law broke up with her partner due to her significant debt and has moved back to her parents' house. She screams under the burden of paying her debts and the compensation. Perhaps to comfort me, my father-in-law updates me about their situation in his monthly letters. He said, I will take responsibility for my family to the end. Having someone who watches over the entire family is very reassuring. Time has passed, and with this installment, the compensation payments will be completed. 
When I received the letter confirming the end of the payments, it was accompanied by a Gerbera, the same type of flower my sister-in-law had thrown away. I thought my father-in-law would also divorce after settling the compensation, however. Anyone who hurts their family for money will likely do similar things again. They need to be fundamentally reformed. From this message, it seems my father-in-law's surveillance will continue for a while longer. My marital life may have been chaotic, but being saved by such an honorable man as my father-in-law was a relief. With words of concern for his health and a note saying, thank you for everything, I sent my final letter to him in the post. As for me, I have moved and found a new job in a new place. After enduring so much, I am now enjoying my hobby of traveling and living a happy life surrounded by flowers.